Hey guys. Well, it is an absolute honor for me to welcome to proclaim his word, Mr. T.A. McMahon. Mr. McMahon is the president and executive director of the Berean Call Ministry, and he has worked hand in hand now with Dave Hunt for over 25 years. Mr. McMahon authored and co authored several very important books, such as The Seduction of Christianity, The New Spirituality, and Showtime for the Sheep which was a very critical analysis of the evangelical church's embrace of Mel Gibson's very Catholic movie, The Passion of the Christ. Mr. McMahon also wrote and produced several Christian documentaries, such as The Cult Explosion, The God Makers, The New Age, Pathway to Paradise, The Evolution Conspiracy, A Woman Rides the Beast, Israel, Islam, and Armageddon, and Psychology and the Church. Now, I requested an interview with Mr. McMahon a few weeks ago, and he graciously accepted. So this is a conversation that we had yesterday. God bless. Well, T.A., welcome to proclaim his word, brother. It's a pleasure. Here mm -hmm. we are, Sycamore Canyon. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. A little chilly, but it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> I'm down here. This is Southern California, folks, and uh, I just came here from Bend, Oregon. <laughs> 20 degrees. So we're loving it. Oh, yeah, this is great, man. <laughs> Well, again, um, as I said in my opening, I wanted to uh, speak to T.A., and uh, he granted me this interview, and I really do appreciate it. And I wanted to um, just pick your brain a little bit on the Christian church right now and where it stands. Um, the first question I have is, uh, what is your evaluation of uh, the condition of Christianity right now? Well, Mark, tough one. Um, I'll give you a little background. Uh, I've been a believer for about 35 years. Started off within the first six months of being a believer, mm -hmm. uh, working with Dave Hunt. Mm -hmm. Wow, what, yeah. a, what an incredible privilege. And But I came out of Roman Catholicism. Um, then as a new believer, uh, I had the opportunity, not only working with Dave, but observing the evangelical church. Mm -hmm. Back then, it had some meaning, the term evangelical, mm -hmm. uh, Bible-believing Christians. So that was new to me as a young believer, but still 35 years of observing trends, observing movements, observing teachings, doctrines, and so on that uh, have come into the church. Mm -hmm. uh, the church, the body of Christ, which now I'm a member, okay, right. and then I was, and still am, and, but I've seen some uh, unbelievable change. Uh, the, th the encouraging thing about it is that um, Scripture this is this is the scripture prophesied this. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of uh, in, in uh, Timothy where it says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I could pick one scripture uh, out of many that uh, relate to the last days, uh, apostasy, things that are going to develop, um, that would be a key. So uh, to answer your question, uh, the church has come a long way, mm -hmm. or in my view, um, has slid down a long way into into apostasy. Obviously, God still has his committed believers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still strong churches out there, but they are rare. Mm -hmm. um, even solid churches uh, throughout the uh, three decades, uh, some you, you look at today and say, what happened? Yeah. So it's a concern, but it's it's uh, the Word of God prophesied that this would take place, and uh, we're seeing it, even though it may grieve us. Mm -hmm. um, on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, we're seeing where God's Word fulfilled in our time. Yeah. Um, do you have any any kind of examples you can give us as far as apostasy? Well, uh, see, this is what I love about what you do. <laughs> when I first contacted you mm -hmm. I was excited to see you know what you were presenting um, and uh, so I know that as I said God has his people out there who are proclaiming the word teaching mm -hmm. the word and that's what it comes down to mm -hmm. the B-I-B-L-E that's, that's right. the book for me you know, right. for 35 years or 30 some years as a Roman Catholic mm -hmm. uh, never read it right. you know, wasn't never encouraged to read it and so on but in the process of these things that I've just mentioned, these things that are taking place, uh, the solution, the, the antidote, the prevention, mm -hmm. comes out of 
reading the word, mm -hmm. studying the word, memorizing um, scripture, w without a doubt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Holy Spirit can work out of a vacuum, but He doesn't usually. Right. Okay. So consequently, we need the word in our heart and mind. Now, based on the question that you asked, so what has gone wrong? Where, where are things gone south? Well, if you look at the trends that that have uh, affected the church over the last three decades, you can point to things like seeker friendly, mm. seeker sensitive, mm -hmm. uh, our young people, entertainment, uh, as opposed to discipleship. Uh, all of these things have weaned evangelicals off the Word of God. Mm -hmm. um, that's been the basic problem, the main problem. But mm -hmm. the good news is that's the solution. We mm -hmm. get back to the Word. Yeah. And you think about people like um, Joel Osteen, as you said, Rick Warren, and people like that. I mean, um, they have some of the biggest churches in America, and yet they are some of the biggest problems, you know? There isn't any doubt about it. All you have to do is check out some interviews with Joel Osteen when mm -hmm. um, uh, Larry King mm -hmm. interviewed him. What was his answer? Over and over. Well, I don't know, Larry. Yeah. I'm not sure, Larry. Well, I don't know. He even called uh, Mitt Romney, who was a Mormon, he called him a Christian. He's, he called him a Christian <laughs> brother. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's a problem from, mm -hmm. from not only uh, you know, Joel Osteen, mm -hmm. Jimmy Carter. I mean, let's go down the line. Mm -hmm. the, the, this theological correctness, political correctness in, mm -hmm. in, in theology mm -hmm. just opens the door to anybody and everybody. Discernment, again, folks, that's the, that's the issue here. If you're not going by the Word of God, mm -hmm. then you're going by the Word of man. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, you know, Proverbs twice, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of, of death. death. Mm -hmm. You know, when the when the Holy Spirit says one thing, you pay attention. When He, when yeah. he repeats Himself, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, it's really critical. So, uh, yeah. so that's what we're seeing. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you look at, quote-unquote, Christian America right now. Um, what, what is your view of America right now as far as um, morally, spiritually, financially, politically, everything? I mean, because I think everything that we're talking about, um, the demise of the Christian church, does affect America as a whole. So how do you see America right now? Well, uh, I just go by what the Word of God says. I try to. Mm -hmm. And uh, although it doesn't single out America per se, mm -hmm. but, you know, America is in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the world. The world, when you deviate, when, when the church, which is supposed to be the light, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to the world, when that starts to go dark, well, mm -hmm. you're going to expect everything else. When, when the church is in the world and the world is in the church, we, we got serious problems right. and we're seeing it uh, uh, you know um, I'll give you this may sound like a side note but but it's not we're talking about prophecy mm -hmm. uh, and how the Word of God says that things are going to uh, play out in the last days mm -hmm. well um, try this prophecy uh, mark my words in the last days there will be perilous times mm. Men will be lovers of their own self. Oh, well. mm -hmm. uh, and then, folks, you, you go to that scripture, and uh, this is Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, but then you go 3, 4, 5, 6, you see the mm -hmm. fruit mm -hmm. of self mm -hmm. and self-love. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've had people tell me, well, Tom, you know, I mean, so this is prophecy? You know, come on, we've always, since the Garden of Eden, we've always been mm -hmm. into self. And so, mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. However, uh, you find a generation, any generation in history, in which self has become the solution to mankind's problems. Self-esteem, self-love, mm -hmm. self-worth. Uh, this is all humanistic psychology that the scripture says in the last days this, this is going to be magnified over any time in history. Mm -hmm. Hey. Is that our day or not? You know, this is, um, I've said many times before that we are probably the most self-absorbed generation in the history of man. You know, as you just said, self, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. It's, um, that's what this entire generation is all about, you know, and uh, sad to see. Um, what do you think about the ecumenical movement? I mean, as far as, uh, because we know the Catholic Church, you, uh, mm. because uh, I, th I think you were Catholic for how many years now? 30 years. Well, right. 
And I, at the end, I said, oh, come on. <laughs> I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic. Right, I mean, you know, right. Not practicing, right. but still a pride thing and so on. So, yes, I've had uh, uh, grade school, high school, Catholic military school, and even in college, mm -hmm. I was in uh, Catholic fraternity for mm -hmm. a short time. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I believe that, uh, you know, probably for the first 20 maybe 21 years of my life, mm -hmm. I was what we called a devout Catholic, right. practicing, uh, committed, and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, Well, and you look at the Catholic Church right now, the Catholic Church is the one that's leading the ecumenical movement. Um, where does the ecumenical movement stands as of right now? This is one of the, the big issues. Again, we'll put it in a, a prophetic uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. The when you look at the Bible, it says certain events will take place. That um, you know, particularly. Let's start at, uh, at the very end. We know the world dissolves. The mm -hmm. world's going to be uh, uh, end end in fire. Mm -hmm. Okay, like because Peter God, yeah, yeah, because the Lord's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. So prior to that, we have uh, a thousand year reign of Christ. Reign of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it won't be perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, why not? It, Christ is reigning from Jerusalem. Well, why won't it be perfect? Because some who are born during the millennium, uh, they go along with the rules, mm -hmm. but they don't make a heart's commitment to Christ. Mm -hmm. Not in their heart. Mm -hmm. So when Satan is unbound from, you know, and uh, released, mm -hmm. uh, many follow him. Yeah. Revelation chapter 20. Right. So mm -hmm. that's a thousand years. So what I'm doing is starting the back end and then moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, what precedes that? Well, certainly the second coming of Christ so that he can be, you know, rule through the, the, the thousand years, the mm -hmm. millennial reign. Uh, well, and what precedes that? Well, what precedes that is the great tribulation. Mm -hmm. Okay. What preceded that historically? I mean, it's in the future, but... The, what preceded that is the rapture of the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the reason I'm laying all that out is because that is the prophetic scenario. Now during this uh, great tribulation time, it's the kingdom of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. and we may talk about that later because mm -hmm. a lot of things that are going on right. today, uh, wittingly or unwittingly, are contributing to the development of not the millennial reign of Christ, but mm -hmm. to the kingdom of the Antichrist. That right. has to precede uh, the thousand-year reign of Christ. So, so consequently, if there is going to be a kingdom of the Antichrist, uh, which the scripture says it will happen, and that is in preparation now, mm -hmm. okay, uh, obviously, the rapture of the church is not something that we can pin down, mm -hmm. okay, but we, knew, we do know it's going to precede the the great tribulation so the uh, the value of looking at all of this stuff is that we know kind of what's ahead mm -hmm. and we can begin to apply the things that we see happening now and say well wait a minute uh, this looks like it's contributing to the uh, development of the religion of the Antichrist mm -hmm. ecumenism is one of the major major deals mm -hmm. okay uh, the the religion of the Antichrist to begin with is going to be uh, something that works with everybody to a certain degree. Right. Uh, it's going to be a form of Christianity, but it'll be a veneer. It mm -hmm. won't be it won't be biblical Christianity. Mm -hmm. We got a plane coming over here yeah. near the Air Force Base. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Um, the uh, you know let's talk go back to Roman Catholicism. Mark, when I was uh, a young boy going to St. Mary uh, grade school, and I would walk home from school, and there was a Baptist church on the corner, I, would, I wouldn't even walk through the shadow oh. of that church. Mm. I mean, so to, to show you the, the, uh, not just the dichotomy, but, but a division between Roman Catholicism, mm -hmm. okay, that was our view, okay, mm -hmm. and I'm sure the, the so-called Protestants, um, I say so-called because... Uh, if you're a non-Catholic, that doesn't make you a Protestant. Right. I'm a Protestant because I left the Catholic Church, so in protest. Mm -hmm. But basically, uh, the the mentality was uh, such a division between Roman Catholicism and 
um, you know, particularly biblical Christianity or those who are, who are non-Catholics. Well, all of that has been massaged around, mm -hmm. uh, diluted um, to the point, and this basically happened at the um, Vatican II. Mm -hmm. uh, there was see the Catholic Church cannot really change mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's it is a uh, church based on infallibility mm -hmm. according to their view. Okay, it's a church based on uh, dogmas that um, they just can't change. I mean, if you're infallible and you make a, a pronouncement, <laughs> uh, you, you know you can't go back on it. Right. But you can massage some things around. Right. You can. And what happened was in Vatican II. All of a sudden, you know, as I said, prior, the Vatican II was in the, the mid-1960s. 62 to 65, wasn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. With Vatican II, mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, in the mid-1960s, early, early 1960s, uh, the, prior to that, you had uh, non-Catholics were not saved, were not uh, believers, you know, they, they were not Christians as far as the Roman Catholic Church was concerned. Mm -hmm. um, after Vatican II, if you were a non-Catholic, but a baptized non-Catholic, mm -hmm. okay, then you were what, what they called separated brethren, mm. okay. Mm. So, uh, you're sort of in the fold, but you're not in the richness of the right. mother church. Right. And, uh, well, that was different, mm -hmm. okay. That was a big change from what I mentioned earlier about, man, I wouldn't even, you know, go, go through the shadow of, of a Baptist church or mm -hmm. whatever. And other things began to happen. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church became, quote unquote, more evangelical. Mm. They started to think like evangelicals on the surface, okay, uh, interact with evangelicals to the point where um, now there wasn't this sharp division. Now that was massaged around. So, mm -hmm. so we're talking about ecumenism here. This is the way the Catholic Church uh, became more effective in this country. Mm -hmm. You see, it's history. Um, they say if you go to Haiti, for example, well, you, know, you know about this from from where you grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, they say that Haitians are 85 percent Roman Catholic mm -hmm. and 100 percent Voodoo, Voodoo, <laughs> right? <laughs> Because mm. that's the way the Catholic Church worked. They, they would go in and uh, check out the spirituality mm -hmm. and then syncretize or, or kind of amalgamate mm -hmm. their belief systems. So in, ha in Haiti, for example, when they're, uh, instead of praying to the spirits, mm -hmm. demons actually, mm -hmm. uh, they're using the saints' names, mm -hmm. okay? And, and the rituals are all, you know, the rituals are somewhat integrated. I, I've heard even today when there's a, you know, a baptism or some kind of official uh, religious ceremony, mm -hmm. they'll have a Voodoo priest mm -hmm. as well as a Catholic priest and so on. Mm -hmm. That's ecumenism directed to Roman Catholicism, but it's across the board. Mm -hmm. um, I just wrote about uh, Chrislam. Mm. <laughs> it was Chrislam? <laughs> I mean, seriously? Mm -hmm. If you've never heard the term, it's trying to uh, integrate Islam with Christianity. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, and it's it started in Africa. Uh, I mean, you can understand their reasons for it because Muslims are killing Christians and mm -hmm. so-called Christians. Sudan, yeah, like that. Oh, right. Without a doubt. So they're trying to bring peace by combining the two. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, uh, if you're a true Muslim, that would infuriate you, mm -hmm. okay? If you're a true Christian, that would, wouldn't make you happy either. Mm -hmm. But here in this country now, we have... Uh, Chrislam, that's C H R I S A L E M, mm -hmm. just so you understand the, the term. Uh, and if you're a, so they have worship services in which they'll read from the Quran mm -hmm. and they'll read from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And somehow this is going to bring peace and amalgamate. But as I said, if, if you understand the Quran and, and you understand the Bible, uh, this is anathema. This is. Yeah. Bad news. It's ecumenism. Though. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, you think about the Roman Catholics and the ECT in 1994. You think about the Roman Catholics and the um, 
the Lutherans in 1999. You think about just a couple of years ago with the Manhattan Declaration, you know, signing that whole thing. The, I think it was the Roman Catholics and the and the Orthodox and plus and the quote unquote evangelical yeah. Christians. Yeah. I mean, just a, just a mess over and over and over again. And again, the the Catholic Church is the one that's leading all of this. I mean, they're the ones behind all of this, you know. Well, and the sad part is. Um that's true. They they would take the, the the lead, but we see this within so-called evangelical Christianity right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was Chuck Colson that was a part of uh, ECT, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the World Council of Churches, the uh, uh, their organizations out there, thinking that by watering down, and that's the only way they can do it. They have mm -hmm. to reduce it to such a common denominator mm -hmm. that. Um, so that it makes sense, but mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense, uh, especially if you know the Word of God. But, right. but Mark, again, we're going back to the basic problem. Mm -hmm. It's the Word of God. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you're not a student of the Word of God, if you're not, and look, uh, just side note here, Mark and I are talking to you, but we're encouraging you not to buy into what we say just because we're saying it. Test uh, everything. Hey, the Berean call. <laughs> the Bereans. They Acts searched, 17, 11. They yeah. searched the scriptures daily mm. to see if these things were so. So unless you do that, you're up for grabs. Mm. There, there's nothing uh, that they can't put over on you if you can't hold it up to the Word of God because you don't know the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And what does it take to know the Word of God? Well, you need to know how to read. Mm. But even if you don't know how to read, you can hear it. It's on tape. It's on tape. So on. Yeah. But the point is... You got to get into it. You got to get into it. You got to get into it if you're going to be kept from the seduction, mm -hmm. the delusion, mm -hmm. the deception. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what did Jesus say when he when he was asked by his disciples about the last days? Let no man deceive you. Yeah. Take heed. Yeah. Take heed. That's that's the problem. It's amazing how many people right now are going around um, calling themselves Jesus. You know all these false Christs. You know we now have a guy in, uh, in Australia. You know who says that he's um, he's he's Jesus Christ come back, and um, he's got like several dozen followers in his church. I mean, it's um, it's insane what people will fall for um, if they don't know their word. Right. You know. Um, mm, yeah. Well, again, um, you know when people hear the term doctrine, oh, that sounds like it's theological. Mm. All it means, folks, if you don't know, it means teaching. Mm. Jesus said, "If you love me." Keep my word. Mm -hmm. Do the things that I say. And you can't do the things you say if you don't know his teachings. He wasn't. You know, he also says, uh, again in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking about the Ten Commandments alone. He was talking about everything that he said. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what they are, <laughs> how can you call yourself a follower of Christ yeah. if you don't know? You know, on word? that note, as a matter of fact, on that note, you know, you talk about... Um, on YouTube, of course, which is where I, I do a lot of my ministry, um, there's a rise of uh, militant atheism, you know, the, the atheist. And, um, I mean, I see, I've gone in a, on a few comment threads and just read a few comment threads where the atheists, um, many of the atheists know the Bible a whole lot more than so-called Christians. And they just rip Christians apart, you know, and it shows you, I mean, it's just pathetic when you see an atheist knowing the Bible a whole lot better than a so-called Christian. Yeah, and how about cults at your door? Mm. You know, um, uh, there's nothing more bizarre than Mormonism, in my view. And this is having, you know, read the Book of Mormon, studied it. You know, I was uh, one of the writers involved on, in the God Makers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, but then what about Jehovah's Witnesses? Mm -hmm. I mean, part of the problem, uh, you know, I've got an article coming up on that. Part of the problem is when they come to your door, they have so many errors, you don't mm. know where to begin with mm. these guys. Mm. But if you don't know the word, and these guys are trained uh, right. in terms of what they believe and what they teach, mm. uh, they can overwhelm you. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, anyway, let me move on, ask you sure. a little something about the Middle East and what's going on in the Middle East. I mean, um, I really want to pick your brain on this. Uh, you see the quote unquote so called Arab Spring. In the Middle East right now, all of these Arab nations falling one after the other, all Muslims, of course. Um, do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing, and how does it affect um, Israel? 
I mean, what's your whole thought on that, on that whole thing? Because, I mean, we just see one country falling after another. One, I think Syria is up next, and, uh, and in, that, in that light, too, what about Iran, you know, on the cusp of getting a, a nuclear weapon? I mean, how does that affect Israel? I mean, um, what, what do you think about that? Well, um, I, I have a view, Mark. It may not be uh, the, the view, the most popular view, but mm -hmm. it's just, uh, just my own ideas. And, you know, and folks, again, what we're saying here, I, I'm giving you my opinion. When it comes to the scriptures, you know, treat it like a commentary, uh, whatever I might have to say or Mark has to say. Uh, you know, you, you just have to check it out. But you're asking me for, for, for my opinions, mm -hmm. and I'll give them. Um, first of all, let's start with Islam uh, and, and these countries that are falling. Uh, I know there are some out there that believe that the, uh, the Antichrist is going to be a Muslim, and given the rise of Islam and, and, and its spread and so on, that this is going to be the religion of the Antichrist. I don't think so. Mm. Now, notice I said I don't think so. I don't know, but but if asking my perspective, you see, to me, um, the religion of the Antichrist initially is going to be something that seduces, not something that uh, compels or uh, intimidates. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Islam has always been a religion of the sword, mm -hmm. from from Muhammad to his father-in-law on down through mm -hmm. history, it has been a co coercive mm -hmm. religion. Uh, Sharia, mm -hmm. I mean, you want to talk about legalism, um, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's an insane form of, of, of legalism, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't see this being popular. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see them having the, uh, the wherewithal to, um, you know, like they could back in the Middle Ages. Um, you know, when it was by the sword, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen what uh, the West has been able to reasonably handle. Um, oh, thank you. That was, a, that was a crow, in case <laughs> you're wondering, folks. <laughs> um, but we've, you know, we've seen uh, that we're, we're, they can be stopped, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, but my point is, is that um, I don't see them uh, affecting um, the world uh, in terms of a religion of the Antichrist mm -hmm. that's going to develop. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, there isn't any doubt that God, just as he used the Babylonians mm -hmm. to affect Israel mm -hmm. as a corrective thing. Right. I mean, that's, that's, in my view, that's the way I, I see this taking place. Mm -hmm. He's certainly, uh, Israel is in there in unbelief, right. but they're there because God's got them there. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, but it's not going to be pleasant for them. No, they've not come to Christ. Uh, uh, they will, mm -hmm. you know, uh, according to the them. scriptures. One third of them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but the timing of it, only God knows. But nevertheless, um, God's words, uh, the scriptures, uh, have so they might be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Israel is in that place, 1948. Mm -hmm. uh, they're there, and I don't see Iran, I don't see anything taking them out. That's right. um, even, you know, through the series of the wars that they, that they fought. I mean, you, I mean, uh, you know, I know uh, a friend of mine was a general who went through all those wars, mm -hmm. Israeli general, and um, the stories that he will tell, mm -hmm. you know God's hand is upon, upon that people. So it's not like it's going to be, a, you know, a cakewalk. Right. Uh, but because God is correcting, He's dealing with them. He's going to get their attention. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any of the surrounding nations. Uh, I don't see anybody taking them out. Mm -hmm. in, in my view, uh, right. and based on my understanding of the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. It's um, on one hand, it is kind of frightening to see exactly what's going on from a worldly point of view. You mm -hmm. you, you wonder, okay, well, what, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? But. Uh, but for those of us who've read the Bible, um, we can take some comfort because we know that a lot of these things were prophesied and we know that um, when all these things are happening, we can look up because our redemption draws right. nigh. Christ right. is coming back very soon. So um, a lot of people are you know, very um, worried about what's going on over there. They think there's going to be a nuclear war or whatever. But for those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, um, you know what? It's time for us to start looking up because yeah. Christ can come back at any moment. Yeah. And Mark, so... For maybe some who are watching this 
and they say, well, what makes these guys so sure? Um, what I like to do is fall back on Prophecy 101, mm. okay? Mm. The first coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 2,000 years prior to Christ, 1,000 years prior to Christ, 500 years. We have prophecy after prophecy saying when he's going to come, mm -hmm. where he's going to come, mm -hmm. where he's going to be born, mm -hmm. how he's going to... I mean, you can create the, the crucifixion from the Psalms, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, almost a, a detailed scenario mm -hmm. of it happening perfectly, mm -hmm. exactly how the prophets said. Mm -hmm. So, if we looked at the first coming of Christ and all the, the pro prophetic utterances, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, were fulfilled in every detail, well, what does it tell us about the prophecies to come? Right. I mean, if, if you're working on a thousand percent or a hundred percent, it's going to take place. So that's where our confidence is. Right. And on all we're doing, I mean, we're just students of the Bible. We're, we're just reading these things. And taking them literally. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we take things, well, you know, that's a complaint. Right. Well, what do you mean? You, you take everything from the Bible literally? <laughs> well, if that were the case, folks, then we'd have to believe that God was a chicken. Right. Because he has a, feathers. Yeah, right. exactly. He's got yeah. wings. Right. <laughs> right. Or that Jesus was a loaf of bread. Right. Because he said, I'm the bread of life. <laughs> no, no. We take things, and, and that's an important uh, point for people who are just started reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't take, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a point of brilliance mm -hmm. to figure out what is to be taken literally and what what needs to be taken figuratively. And symbolic, um, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, you know, you do that. Some things might be a little tougher than others, but basically, you know, the Word of God is its own mm -hmm. explanatory uh, process. Yeah. yeah. Scripture interprets Scripture. Bingo. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I mean, I could go on and on. I mean, we could go on and on talking, talking about so many things. But I want to get back to, I want to come back, end with um, what we, what we started with the sure. church. Um, you, you just mentioned about new believers. You know, those people who just came to, came to the Lord. Mm -hmm. What would, what is your exhortation to new believers out there? Those people who are just coming into the church, who are just being born again, and also um, people who've been saved for a long time. And you know what? They're just like confused right now based on a lot of stuff that's going on, as you said, the seeker-sensitive movement, um, all that stuff. I mean, well, what is your exhortation to just Christians in general right okay. now? Okay, well, let's start with, and I would say this to, uh, to new believers um, and to those who have been Christians for a long time, mm -hmm. but they, as it says in Hebrews, uh, second chapter of Hebrews, take heed lest ye drift away. So for a, uh, for a person who's been a, a believer for a long time, where do you stand with the Word of God? W where's your discipline? Are you, are you reading the Word of God? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's not a matter, it's, it's never been a matter of intellect. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> I couldn't be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> join the club. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> but you know, God says He'll use the the foolish things of this world to to confound the wise. Why, how can He do that? Mm. Because it's Him. Mm. You know, once you become a believer in Christ, uh, you're a new creation. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you, mm. the Spirit of Truth, to help you. Uh, understand things and to help you grow and mature in the faith. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, then what do you need to do? If it's the Holy Spirit working these things, well, you need to be willing and be diligent to read the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, go back to a young believer. <laughs> sometimes they're asked, or, or um, say in another way, sometimes when you're, um, you know, they want to know. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> They worry. They, they say, well, should I go to seminary? Should mm. I go to Bible college? Uh, you could do that. Um, I'm not a big fan of seminaries. Mm. Okay. Cemeteries? But, sometimes. <laughs> um, and most of the time, I think. Mm. Mm. Uh, Bible college? That could be a good thing. But it costs money. Mm -hmm. And I'm frugalicious. Yeah. Okay? It's not that it, if you have the opportunity, I'm not trying to deny that. <laughs> but here's the way I work it. I'm of the school of familiarity. Mm. What does that mean? It means you read the Word, and then when you read it, you read it again, mm -hmm. and you keep reading it. Mm. You see, the more familiar 
that you are with the Word of God, with the Scriptures, just by reading it and reading it and reading it. I mean, Mark said it. Scripture interprets Scripture. All of a sudden, you, you say, hey, wait a minute. I right. remember reading this here, or right. I remember reading this here. So that's how you grow in the faith. And uh, the Bible is, you know, these are like love letters from Jesus. Mm. I mean, this, he is the Word, that's right? right? So, so when, you're, when you're excited about getting to know him, mm -hmm. because you get like a love letter from somebody, mm. you get to know their character, you get to understand what they desire, you, you learn how to please them. Mm. I mean, that's absolutely critical. So, what's the program? The program is read and read and read, mm. but don't make it all head knowledge. Mm. You've got to be a doer of the Word. Mm. That's what James writes. Right. You know? So you, you read, you understand, and then you apply it. And I'm telling you, folks, um, you know, some of you say, oh, man, I just wish I had the wisdom of this person or that person or so on. You will have a wisdom. Uh, I don't care what kind of academic program you've been through. You will have the wisdom from the throne of God. Mm -hmm. and, and He will enable you to apply it to minister to, whether it be family members, uh, men who have come to Christ. Hey, you've just become the spiritual head of your household. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got to get after it. You've got to understand mm -hmm. what the Word of God says. And again, how do you do it? By reading, applying it, being used of the Lord, growing in the faith. That's mm -hmm. That's the solution to all this stuff that we've been talking about. All yeah. the issues that are problematic, all the things that draw people away from the, you know, from the church, create problems in their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, Back to the Bible. Back to the Bible. Without a doubt. Because yeah. look, it's either going to be God's word mm -hmm. or man's opinion, speculations and so on. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Yeah. I'm going with... The B-I-B-L-E. That's right, the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, well, with that, any last words, brother? And then we'll just close it. Okay, well, it's been a little cool, but yeah. it's been, been uh, terrific being with you. you know, we're we're going to do this, some more of this, folks, unless mm. <laughs> unless Mark says, don't have this guy back. <laughs> no, you will be back. Okay. Trust me, you will be yeah, back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, this is, uh, and, uh, you know, I want to encourage you mm. with what you're doing. I know you've been getting some stuff out there for a long time. And that's what we need to do, folks. Um, I don't care how long you've been a believer, uh, how young you are in the faith, you've got something to share, something to give, something to offer. Mm -hmm. um, so go, minister. You've been freely given. It's, it's a gift. Well, let's, let's close with the gospel. I'll, I'll start off and you add to it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe again, somebody watching this stuff says, man, yeah, that stuff's kind of interesting, but what, what are these guys all about? We're about the gospel. Mm. The gospel is that everyone, all have fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm. And that sin, I don't care, what do you think, oh, just a little thing, that separates you from God forever. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a hope mm -hmm. of being with God under that condition mm -hmm. unless you turn to Him who is already, Jesus, has paid the full penalty for your sins. For mm. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, mm. to pay the full penalty for your sin, my sin, everyone's sin. Mm. So don't think we're sitting here and saying, okay, guys, we're better than anybody else. So no, not. no, we're just saved. Yes. And that free opportunity, that gift of God, is available to anyone. So what do you do? You have to recognize that you are a sinner, and you can't save yourself. You have to understand that the only one who could pay the full penalty for your sin, Jesus which Christ. Jesus did on the cross in those three hours, mm. Scripture says he tasted death for every man. Not just physical death, mm. but he paid for every sin that you, if you're listening to me right now, that you've ever had in your life or ever will have, mm. he covered it all on that cross. That's what it's all about. Mm. And that's the explanation that sometimes we don't, we don't have. Or mm. people say, yeah, well, you know, you need to know Jesus and love Jesus. Of course you do. But you need to know what he accomplished for you mm. and for me, for Mark, for all of us. All right. Paid the price. He was buried. And three days later, he rose from the dead. 
okay, for our justification. Now he's sitting at the right hand of God. And all we have to do now is, as T.A. says, recognize that we are sinner. Go to him in humility. Fall at the foot of the cross and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, like the tax collector in Luke chapter 18. Go to our Lord Jesus Christ. Just confess your sins to him. Ask him to forgive you. The Bible says he will forgive you. Okay, he will wash you, he will cleanse you, and he will make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, you know, one of the testimonies, well, you're looking at two. Um, talk about a reprobate. I'm talking, not talking about you. I'm talking about me. But, uh, but you, you know, you would amen to that as well. God, Christ changed our lives. I mean, that's one of the proofs that we're just not making this stuff up. I mean, I see people's lives changed. Dramatically. Uh, dramatically. It's not we got all our problems solved. No. no. Nobody's talking about that. Well, eventually we will. Absolutely. We'll be with him. We'll be like him. Yeah. But uh, basically, change lives. If you want your lives changed, yeah. it's the only way to go. And if you want to be with the Lord, not separated from him forever, because that's the only other option. Mm -hmm. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Amen. T.A. McMahon, thank you so very much for coming by for Claim His Word. Yeah. I appreciate it, brother. And I'm going to have a link to the Berean call um, in the information section, so go there, click on the link, check it out. Um, I'm also going to have a link to their um, YouTube w website, because they also, they're also on YouTube, so I'm going to have a link to that, too. And go over there, check it out, and see what they have to offer. There's a lot of good stuff over there, and uh, brother, thank you so very much. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Sure. How's Dr. Hunt, and how can we pray for him? Okay, now remember, you said doctor, but Dave okay. says, that's okay, Dave says, not only am I not a doctor, I'm not even a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's he doing? And how? Well, you can pray for Dave. He, he is in a nursing facility. Okay. okay. And, uh, uh, you know, he still has a sweet spirit, but mm -hmm. he's, um, he's not, uh, the warrior is no longer... Um, He's wielding a smaller sword in, in, in the situation he's in, but he's not, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's tough, but mm. the Lord is still using him. We will pray for him. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you guys.